Hello everybody, today we're taking a look at Blue Jay from Rotor Geeks. And obviously, it's the best color in the world. Running on 1102, 10,000 kV motors. Mine is the ELRS version, you can tell because a little cube antenna right down there, and this is the X12 board, which features a 12 amp ESC and it is a 1 and 2S board. Also has the open VTX that goes up to 400 milliwatts. Camera is the Runcam Nano 3, which not a great camera, but it is the lightest camera we have. And the props are the Gym Fan 2023 two inch tri-bladed props. It weighs just under 36 grams. I like to fly the small light batteries so I can be super agile. So I use these Hobby King Nanotechs, 300 milliamp, just like I do on a number of quads. And with that battery, it brings the weight up to a 54 point two grams. Carbon fiber looks to be two and three quarter millimeters thick. And motor post to motor post, it looks like about 82 millimeters. You might say it was inspired by one of my favorite micro quads because it's running pretty much all the same parts. So this is the 2S Rocket Race from Jack's 3D Printing, if you're interested in that. Uh, he did the canopy print as well. And I added an Express LRS receiver down there. We could probably save a gram, maybe a gram and a half, if we took off these nylon lock nuts and replaced them with either typical nuts, maybe even nylon nuts, or we just left them off, except for the one in the back. Because typically with these canopy prints, they'll stay on with just screws. And even though this is from Canada, I'm here in the Midwest, kind of central Midwest, and I got it within five days when I ordered it. Yep, I paid for it. Okay, so this is an after work sort of flight, so the sun's relatively low. There's going to be some sections of this that's going to be kind of hard to look at because the sun's going to get right in that camera's eye. And unfortunately, that camera doesn't handle it great. Um, but again, it's the lightest camera that we can come across. And uh, that punch over the house, I finally figured out what causes that accelerated or that downdraft where the props uh, spin up as I come down. And I do it again here. I just need to make sure I get off the throttle before I start my yaw and roll to get my nose down and over. Uh, I've actually brought that up in a few videos and I thought it had something to do with wind direction and props and maybe the quad design style, but I think it's that because there I just did it the same way twice within moments of one another and one way the props spun up as I turned down and the other way it didn't, it was more normal. And I guess over all those thousands of times I've done that, I've just had the timing down and I've gotten it wrong here a few times in a few videos. So uh, if you've seen some of those videos and you've wondered about that, it looks like I'm getting my nose of the quad over too quickly uh, before I'm getting down off the throttle. So something to note in your flight as well. So uh, this one, you know, I, I kind of felt like Rotor Geeks kind of suckered me into uh, buying one because they went with Blue Carbon. Um, I don't know how much of that is just my imagination or maybe they were they were tugging on my hard strings there, but uh, I definitely wanted to get one and give it a try. Uh, obviously, I think some will say this is uh, inspired by the Rocket Race. I think that's fair. Uh, I couldn't necessarily disagree with it, but it's not a copy. Uh, so th there's no cloning going on in my opinion, you know, the dimensions are different, the thickness of the carbon's different, it's got a little bit of difference uh, as far as the design goes. Remember, uh, the Rocket Race was designed by uh, Kevin TKS uh, Langlois, he, uh, out of Canada himself, um, he's got a whole bunch of frames, there's one, I think it's the GTR that he's got that's uh, 2.5, which I'd like to try. I just don't know when I'm gonna have time to get to, he designed so many frames. I should stick to this quad. This flies very, very nicely. I did retune it though, because I found after the first couple of flights, you know, my props got a little banged up, that things were getting kind of um, unwieldy. You know, you'd get kind of that, um, shimmers to the moon because my props weren't perfect so uh, rotor geeks tune this kind of to the edge and when your props get a little banged up or uh, the quad just kind of gets broken in let's say uh, you'll need to loosen that up uh, i can leave my cli dump down in the video description down below if you want to use yours uh, or use that mine sorry there so i'm going to go a little long on my flight here and that's always kind of something that i'm i'm pushing the envelope a little bit on my batteries because I like to stay small and light. Uh, we're gonna come in, the battery will recover after I disarm. It's coming back up, but it's not gonna reach 3.5 volts. It's only gonna get to about 3.31, 3.32 volts. So I probably Come should have on. stopped that flight five to 10 seconds yeah. sooner. So very, very comparable what in what said, we've I seen guess. in the rocket <laughs> race. Okay, so a, a few things that they did differently and a couple things that I would do differently. Uh, so the motor, there is some slight motor protection with the point of this coming out. And they also have 
uh, these little T areas or dog bones, you might call them, it, very handy for running your uh, rubber bands. And it did come in the box with the rubber bands. Um, they came with two, so I presumed uh, meant to use two, so I kept using two. And while we're here in the bottom, I am not a fan. Sorry, I bumped the camera there for a second. I'm not a fan of this smooth foam. I would much prefer something that's tacky and rubber. I did find on my crashes with the two rubber bands that my battery would come completely out. And you know, if you were able to fly away from your crash, you would have that dangly battery. And if you've ever flown with a dangly battery, it could be kind of odd and uh, can actually cause some pretty serious flight problems if you're trying to bring it back to you. So I, the, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out this pad uh, for some rubberized sticky pad just to make sure my batteries, because I still crash. I crash quite often, and uh, this is stood up to all my crashes, and I need my battery to stay in there so uh, I can possibly fly it back. So if it lands upright, I'll just fly it back. And from time to time, if I land in one of those areas of the yard that is... And, you know, our landscaping's all messed up back there until the landscaper comes out. But if I land in one of those areas and I can get the props to spin pretty freely and I can usually see that through the camera, then I'll go ahead and turtle mode over and then try to fly away. But that's I'm always very cautious in saying that stuff and showing that stuff. You gotta be really careful and you gotta be able to tell from your camera, specifically if these front two are spinning, then hope the back two. So as you give it a little bit of throttle to fly out of the grass or whatever, got to have a sense of that, you know, don't just pop up to half throttle, start to give it some throttle and we should feel about the time we would see some movement up and if we're not getting it, disarm immediately, go pick it up. Uh, the battery lead, yeah, that's excessive, but it probably, I suspect they come in this length, so that's why it's there rather than shortening it up. I would definitely shorten it up because the way I would run my battery, just like I have on this one, is I use a real short battery lead on that. You can see I've got a rubber mat here and here, and I use a bigger rubber band. Um, so I would also turn this entire uh, hardware uh, 90 degrees because I would like to run uh, my battery across the quad so the battery would sit this way. I like how that feels when you're flying. The the pitch and the, or excuse me, the roll is a little bit more responsive. Uh, our pitch is generally a less significant movement than roll is. Uh, depending upon your camera angle, of course, as well. So I like to have my battery sideways. So I, if I rotate the components, or if you want to think of it another way, rotate the frame underneath the components where our rubber bands would be forward and back. That way I could mount the battery under here. And then we just need a little tiny bit of the lead. Like, like if the end of the connector came to, say, here. That would be fine. So we're really, we probably don't even save a quarter gram. But it's something that, you know, in micros, when you're flying something that, what, is 36 grams? Yeah, I would probably do it. Um, we didn't have any motor wire secured down. That's a little bit of a bummer. You know, the famous Emacs tape I'm always talking about. Uh, but we have a lot of spots for tree ranches to get through here anyway. So if you go tumbling through a tree, I hope it tumbles all the way out. Because if a little branch pops through one of these holes. And this is the same with all these sort of cube style frames. You know, we're, we're kind of flying grappling hooks anyways with the props. Typically, we fly tri-blades. But you combine the prop with the frame and then a frame with holes in it going through, tumbling through a tree. The probability it's going to tumble all the way through and not catch a branch somewhere. Eh, not very likely. It's probably going to get hung up somewhere. But uh, something to think about. Uh, if you take a little bit of the Emacs tape, uh, I call it Emacs tape. Some people say it's acetate or whatever. I've talked about it so much on the channel, I think I kind of need to be quiet. I would kind of pull some of this motor wire out and just find a spot to zip it, or not zip it, but tape it to the carbon fiber frame in some way. Also, you would raise your camera angle uh, just by using the screw in the front and get this to lean back a little bit more. I'm just flexing it, of course, now, but you could just, you raise the front screw up so you take the nut off in this particular case, and then you just kind of unscrew the canopy so it edges up, and then you get more and more camera angle. You can see as I've got it here, pretty good camera angle. It's about typically where I fly, I think, which is probably 25 or... Eh, maybe, maybe 27 degrees. I've never, ever measured it. I always just eyeball it, and then if it feels right, then I just fly it. We still got all the connectors, so this is really a solderless build, and I bring that up because they do offer this in a kit, so you can just buy the components and then put it together yourself. Again, 
I'll put the CLI dump for the, well, this quad in the flight that you saw. I'll put that down in the video description, so if you want to use it. A couple of touches I did like that they did, and I, I kind of wish I would thought of it, was they secured the antenna up here with what I think is a black E6000 adhesive. You know, it's kind of, I think it's E6000. It's not hard, hard, but it's... Uh, it's kept the antenna in there through all my crash. You can kind of see my antenna is a little bit honkered. And also, with the uh, UFL down here, they did the same thing where they just kind of slathered some on. I think that's a good move. Uh, a to keep your antenna antenna upright, so if it doesn't if it falls out of that little holder, it doesn't get chopped up by our props, and helps to keep it on the board. But it's not such hard adhesive that if it tugs on it, that it would. Just, you know, jerk the UFL connector off the board. Hopefully, that could still happen uh, if you use, like, super glue or something like that to secure it down. I'll, I'll use welder a lot because it, it, like this stuff, stays a little bit rubbery. It holds it down, but it's not so firm that it's going to jerk on it until something snaps or breaks. So, uh, I like that, and it's very cleanly applied. You know, sometimes that stuff can get uh, fairly messy. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit bigger than my preferred one, but it does come in the blue, which is, of course, something that I am always talking about. And I kind of play that up as my thing. I do have a lot of blue shirts, and blue has always been a color I've been put in from the time that I was a little kid. Uh, as far as the price goes, we kind of have to do a conversion on that. The bind and flies, of course, these are manual builds. They're not, you know, they, they gathered the parts in-house, and then they put them together. Uh... Canadian dollars, two thirty nine. I think that comes down to about one hundred and eighty bucks U.S. Of course, you can buy the kit. The, you don't have to have the Express Alerts version. You can get the FR Sky version uh, on here as well. So, are you partial to blue, or are you a sucker of blue, or what color would you prefer to see? And what do you think of this little blue J from Rotor Geeks? Let me know down in the comment section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.